so yeah, I've been, you know, doing a recurring segment on the podcast uh, since May of 2023, so about a year ago, uh, which was spurred when I discovered that Canadian banks were beginning to extend mortgage amortization periods on outstanding mortgages uh, to essentially help ease the pain of some Canadians facing higher interest rates and ongoing inflationary pressures. Um, but over the second half of 2023, banks were beginning to get this uh, under control. Um, so again, you know, just to preface it for my segment, uh, I'm going to quickly look at TD's Q2 2024 results, uh, the recent anti-money laundering investigation by the Department of Justice, how it could potentially impede their growth in the US, uh, and then I'll highlight their mortgages by remaining amortization, which will then flow <laughs> into looking at some recent news in the Canadian mortgage space. So first off here, just looking at the financials, Q2 of 2024, uh, revenue grew, or this is for TD, uh, revenue grew 10% year over year. And this was driven by momentum in its markets driven businesses and higher volumes and margins in Canadian personal and commercial banking. Uh, adjusted EPS was up 6.8% to $2.04 uh, for Q2 and declined 2.4% year to date to $4.04. And, and provisions for credit losses were about $1.07 billion, an increase of 58%, which was in line with TD's guidance. Uh, and if you remember last time I did the segment in late 2023, uh, provisions for, for credit losses were actually much higher than expected by analysts, uh, which was a common theme among uh, the banks. So for fiscal 2024, management believes uh, it will be challenging for the bank to meet its medium term adjusted EPS growth target range of 7 to 10% and return on equity target of 16 plus percent. Now, the bank also has a 2027 target of adding 150 additional branches in the US. However, uh, given the US Department of Justice investigation on how Chinese drug traffickers allegedly used the bank to launder 653 million US and bribed TD employees to do so, this growth in US branches and US assets could potentially be hampered. Now, TD noted that it set aside about 450 million US to be paid to one of the regulators and is bracing for other fines, uh, with some analysts indicating that fines could be upward of 1 billion. Now, TD's management said in their conference call that while growing their branches is important for longer term growth in the US, in the short term, they are focused on the uh, on their digital and mobile strategies. Uh, and on May 3rd, uh, the bank announced that the overhaul of its anti-money laundering program is underway, uh, with the bank investing over $500 million in program remediation and platform enhancements. And as well, uh, I brought this up at the end of 2023, uh, but TD initiated a restructuring program, which is expected to generate approximately uh, 400 million Canadian in pre-tax in savings in fiscal 2024, and an annual run rate savings of approximately 725 million Canadian uh, pre-tax. Uh, and management noted uh, that they are on track to achieve these savings. Now, looking at the mortgages by remaining amortization, uh, we are seeing the number of mortgages with an amortization period of greater than 30 years come down to about 17.9% uh, of all Canadian mortgages. Um, that's basically, oh, you can't see it on the screen. I'm just going to just show you where it is. I'll get Brett to highlight it for you so you can see exactly what I'm looking at. Um, so, and this is down from about 21% from October of 2023. Um, but again, just as a reminder, there were zero mortgages, which had an amortization of greater than 30 years in October of 2021. Uh, so while it is improving, if we compare it to, you know, two and a half years ago when rates were significantly lower, it continues to be at elevated levels. Now, while uh, outstanding mortgages with an amortization of greater than 30 years are declining on the bank's books, uh, the Liberal federal government announced that uh, it would now allow first time home buyers to take out an insured mortgage amortized over 30 years up from the traditional 25 years. Uh, and the move will take place on August 1st, of 2024, and will allow Canadians to essentially lower their overall monthly mortgage costs on the loan. However, of course, over the long run, it means that borrowers will have to pay more in interest. 
So here is a quick example to show how much more interest one would be paying on a $400,000 mortgage if they extended their amortization period to 30 years uh, rather than the conventional 25 year mortgage. So for my example, I'm using the assumption of a 5% interest rate. And for the 25 year mortgage, a borrower's monthly payment would be about $191 more uh, than the 30 year mortgage. But over the life of the mortgage, a borrower would be paying about $71,000 more in interest. So while the liberals may be making it easier for Canadians to purchase a home, uh, it is in fact costing Canadians about 24% more in interest over the long run on my specific example here. Now, we have talked about this before, given the elevated interest rates, uh, but just to sit, finish up my segment and open it up to the guys here, uh, the Canadian watchdog, OSFI, uh, released last week that 76% of outstanding resident, residential mortgages as of February will be coming up for renewal uh, by the end of 2026, with about 15% of those mortgages having variable rates. So the longer rates stay elevated here, the longer those households will be dealing uh, with the looming financial strain. I know we've been talking about it before. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about about it. When is this pain going to be coming? Uh, there may be more pain potentially coming here. Um, but yeah, so I guess that is essentially it. And I will open it up to uh, the guys if they have any comments on uh, TD or just mortgages in general. Well, it's interesting the 76% of mortgages due in mm -hmm. 2026 because, I mean, I, ha I, I have read that um, there are a high percentage due in 2026. I didn't get that exact percentage. So that's yeah. that's interesting to know. And it makes sense because if you think most people do a five-year term, you know, that brings you back to 2021, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. When, when rates were much lower. Um, so... Yeah, exactly. I mean, I have two friends that, I mean, I'm sure I've said this on the podcast before, but two friends that, I mean, it was like either 2020 or 2021 when they bought their homes, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, they're in the same, you know, pool there. Uh, part of that would be uh, people were opting over the last couple of years now for shorter term mortgages with the expectation interest rates are going to go down. This is true. And well, just, yeah. you know, the, the five year rates they do have those embedded in it, the expectation that it will go down. That's why you'll see a five-year rate right now will actually be lower than a three-year rate or a two mm -hmm. or a one-year. And that yeah. means that banks and the entire bond market, fixed income market expect rates to go down. So you're not exactly playing the market if you are thinking that because I have seen that occasionally online. But Good point. overall... Or you're, you're, making you're, the, gonna, you're making the assumption that their rates are going to come down more than what... Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's really exactly. what you're betting on. Not that they're just going to come down. It's more than the expectations. And that's... Mm -hmm. But a lot of people were saying, oh, it's it's just they're going to come down, I should say. They're taking a more simplified view than what's actually going on. The banks have outsmarted you, unfortunately, and they probably still will for that. Well, it's like, <laughs> it's like going to Vegas and trying to outsmart the casinos. Exactly. Like, they've been at this for a while. Like it's uh, That's an uphill battle. So if you think you're smarter than the casino or the bank, then there's a problem. I did it my last time in Vegas. So, I mean, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> that wasn't even your money. Your I think so. I'm just something, being a bozo. Something was smart there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 